Welcome back, Trackside here at Winton Motor Raceway for round two of the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championships. Darren Smith, Steve DeVries, right alongside me here. David Tonks, front and centre of screen. Oh, not David Tonks, oh, Darren, sorry. David, David Cox. Cox. Jeez, what are you going on about there? Getting a few different people confused here, but yes, David Cox going around in the back of shot. There's your top couple of drivers for the start for this one. Damien Milano and Andrew Butcher from Paul Cruz and Adam Poole. And the man on screen there has had a pretty impressive run this weekend, David Cox, and he's well supported in the IP paddock this weekend. He's got his mother all the way down from Algeria. It's her 80th birthday, would you believe? Happy birthday, Heather Cox. Fantastic to have her here. Her son works so very hard at his race car and this category of racing. And uh, welcome to the racetrack. It's great to have you here. Damien Milano lines up on pole with the number 59 of Butcher, the BMW, right alongside who has... has had to administer attacks from left, right and centre, front and rear all over this weekend. Paul Cruz in number 13. If the fight back in the last race is anything to go by, the second row of the grid is going to be the point to watch this time. So Tonks, then Troy Lloyd in the number six car. Cade Lehman out of Bendigo. Then it's Jamie Atkinson returning to the game. Defarnas, Danny Timewell in the number 124. Wyatt. Craig Piergross in the big Falcon, Adrian Taranto, who yesterday in the wet letter race. Gary McKay supposed to be in position number 14, but Steve, the number 63, not taking any further part. No, sadly not. Got some engine gremlins to deal with and a couple of other drivers in the field with their own mechanical gremlins as well. So they're slowly dropping like flies, but hopefully the remaining cars stay on the track for this one as we get uh, the Henleys who have been well represented and uh, many, many a mainstay in the big state circuit racing championships. The last couple of cars to form up on this grid alongside Wayne Decker's Audi. In fact, that RX-8 off the back of the grid there, the red one, Bruce Henley at the wheel, he was uh, part of the Victorian Road Registered Association back in the late 80s, early 90s. We are set for a race start. It is the 88 that gets away very, very nicely of Damian Milano. So nicely he can move across the track and have about six car lengths between him and car of Adam Poole gets into P2. Have a look at the Shep City Bearings car. He's made himself a couple of spots off Troy Lloyd. He's picked off Cruz and Lehman, but he hasn't quite got Butcher. Cruz to the inside, though, will have him in the number 13. Yeah, poor start from Paul Cruz in that one. Got it bogged down. Andrew Butcher didn't get the best of starts either, and he's gone backwards. So it is a Holden show, one and two out in front. As you said, good start for Troy Lloyd as well. Managed to grab a couple of extra spots off the start line not usually a good starter but he has had a few of them recently and especially in the race three at Sandown a couple of weeks ago and he's done it again in race three today so he has got the ever charging Paul Cruz there gonna watch out for that s13 it has been absolutely on fire here at Winter Motor Raceway this weekend the VNSS just sitting there currently trying to get onto the back of the BMW of Butcher, who's gone back one spot off the start. But uh, we'll fight back, and you can guarantee you over the next 10 laps, we're going to see a lot of ding-dong battles right throughout this field. People wanting to drag a good points haul away from this last race from the weekend. There's that blue Falcon we uh, mentioned earlier in the grid rundown. A new car to the category, and an absolute behemoth of a racing car. It's not only physically big, it's got big horsepower, and it commands respect right throughout the field. Certainly does. A little bit further down the field, Wayne Twist car 19, holding off one of the two leader cars, Paul Javotz, taking a look at sneaky look around the outside. He may be on the switchback, got Bryson Lloyd in the under two leader, Toyota Celica a little bit further behind him. There are a couple of spots behind the man who leads under two leader at the minute in Mark Baldwin. And as we're talking, that Falcon of Craig Piergross just putting a little bit of the squeeze on Cade Lim and forced to dip a couple of tyres into the dirt on the exit of Turn 1. Bendigo door centre driver doing a good job of just trying to hold on for as long as he could. He put a couple of wheels out over the back of the ripple strip, backed out of it and let Craig Piergross get through in that big blue Falcon. And in fact, Cade Lehman has now got his hands full with the uh, car charging in behind him, which is the white car. Brad White machine. And have a look at uh, pushing in behind White, Defanos, and there is uh, Dave Cox. DK followed by Adrian Taranto. And Danny Timewell's gone backwards in this one as well. So Danny Timewell ran wide on the uh, opening lap at turn three and went down the dirt there. So unfortunately in the V. E, well, sorry, VF, he has gone back a couple of spots. There's Dave Cox, the DLL photography. That's his uh, 
Mum's made her way all the way down from Mildura, and it's fantastic to have your mum trackside when you're going racing. Certainly, as DLL Photography and Design been a great sponsor of the category for many, many years, along with New Line Homes, Yokohama and Traction Tire Centre, and of course, title sponsor, Triple Eight Home Loans. Commodore on Commodore Battle, Mark Defanis putting the pressure and the screws onto Brad White's VX number 48 as they come across the line to finish in lap three. It's a good battle. This is going to spice right up between these two. Fairly evenly matched pieces of kit. They roll into the S's. Here's Cruz getting through now on Troy Lloyd. The number six just goes back one spot just off the podium. So it's like the bottle out of the cap of champagne. Once Paul's got through there on the number six, he's scarpering away and he is now going to throw the challenge down to the BMW. And again, we have Troy Lloyd getting together with the rod and gun entry of Tonks. Little pinch of a break there for Jared Tonks. Just thought about a look at the inside at turn seven. Well covered by Troy. Bit of a shame that there's not too many uh, BMWs out there. The last time we were here at Winton, uh, back in 2019, we actually had a BMW 1, 2, 3. It was the first time ever in Big State Series we've had BMWs finish 1, 2, 3 on the podium at what has typically been uh, an otherwise dominated sort of Holden field of recent years. It certainly has been. Just watching the nuances here. Different, uh, both Holden Commodores, but di completely different eras of car. The, the VN being the uh, B Maxim style, whereas the more updated VE running an independent. And uh, Damien Milano leading this race with Adam Poole. This is the battle for the Poole's race. Poole's definitely been fastest uh, at the moment and has re, you know, hasn't reset the lap record, certainly hasn't. Um, but uh, certainly fastest lap to Paul Cruz now. So wait a second. Uh, Adam Poole set a lap record, then the car right behind him. Paul Cruz, not lap record, fastest race of the lap, I should say. Not get carried away. Don't get too carried away just yet. He's uh, starting to hone in on the back of the two Commodores, that uh, Japanese Nissan with a precise miss on Milano's made a mistake, overcorrected on the exit of four. He drops a bunch of spots, puts a couple of wheels in the dirt. Will he lose another one to Andrew Butcher? He might just hang on for the minute. Damien Milano, very rare mistake there, but I tell you what, Adam Poole is applying the pressure, and now Adam Poole is having the blowtorch applied. See the scorch marks across the back of the Monaro from Paul Cruz that time. Had the blowtorch around, waving it all over the place, doing a terrific job applying pressure here, Paul Cruz. Andrew Butcher had a little bit of a look at Milano in the same He's spot. He's got through, no, sorry, he hasn't got through. He's got through on Milano, not through for the race lead. You'd have to suggest, Steve, that we've now got the two fastest cars here this weekend out in front. I would 100% agree with you. Classes of the field, Adam Poole, class of Sandown, and the first time here at Winton Motor Race. We've been getting better and better as the races have gone on all weekend long. But these still got a little bit of history this weekend. They've come together a couple of times. The incident off the start in the tricky conditions yesterday afternoon. They did have another little tangle unsighted to us in race number two when Cruz did manage to get past him up at turn nine, I believe, after talking to the drivers. That's where it occurred. And Troy Lloyd's around. Oh, this is dangerous. And oh, how have they managed to avoid that? Well, Troy Lloyd trying to re-enter uh, the track there. Obviously, very hard to see out of these cars with the uh, hands device and the wings on the side of the seats for safety. He would not have seen them coming. He would have thought he's got clear track and spun it round, I think. Probably just panicked a little bit, gave it a bit more throttle that he needed. But well done to all his fellow competitors to avoid the Shep City Bearings car that time. Craig Piergross's Falcon was going to be the first man on the scene. Great situational awareness. Just to jink to the right side of the circuit at precisely the right moment. Butcher having a look in the 59 down the side of Damien Milano in the 88. And arriving on the scene at a rapid rate of knots now is uh, Tonks. James Atkinson just off the back of that and Cade Lehman having their own uh, battle as well. And that's for just outside the top five at this point in time. Back to Dave Koss, Pierre Gross, Danny Timewell, Adrian Rhodes, Anderson. Welcome back to the, uh, the game in improved production. We look back down through the field on the timing sheet as it goes to Adrian Taranto, who led yesterday Mark Baldwin under two leader Troy Lloyd back to 14th Bimula in the first of the AU Falcons. Get a look at the battle with Butcher and Tonks here. 
Doing it all for triple eight home loans here in improved production. It's important for Jared Thomas as well. He's got to think about passing Andrew Butcher at some point. Looking at the point standings after the first two races, he's not that far behind. Only uh, seven points behind overall after two races. So a change of position there would elevate Jared Tonks up to position two overall for the race weekend. Current point standings is Milano on 92. Butcher on 81, Jared Tonks 74, and then Adam Poole and Paul Cruz 66 and 67 points respectively, having those recovery jobs after their penalties and infringements and situations from race one yesterday, being a big salvage operation for those two gentlemen. Just watching Mark Stefanos went off the back of the ripple strip, coming onto the straight there and had a big bounce around there. You don't want to do that off the back of the ripple strips. He's pretty much raw concrete. It will rip a tyre open without any notification whatsoever. Here we go, they're starting to back up behind Craig Piergross. Two Commodores, Danny Timewell, Adrian Rhodes Anderson, both experienced races. Danny, experienced sports and Anna. Rhodes Anderson, certainly many, many years of experience in this category. And you get the feeling now that the uh, the big Falcon is starting to get pretty hot and bothered underneath the collar. Yeah, be very, very hot and bothered. And he's uh, gonna be driving in his mirrors at the moment. Andrew Rhodes Anderson's one of those perennial passers that uh, just loves passing guys. Doesn't matter whether he starts at the back of the field and makes, works his way forward or whether he falls through the field and then has to make up all those spots again. But passing, very, very difficult in a place like this, especially for the bigger cars. We have some big, big brakes on those cars. And have a look at the amount of Round that Danny Timewell gains in car 124 on the bigger Falcon of Craig Piergross and is right with him. Able to hang with him through turns 11 and 12. Craig gets a little bit of an air gap, but then Danny closes right up under brakes for one. You'll see it again here. Look at the gap just diminish in a rapid rate of about 120 minutes. So back a shot. Malcolm Nup Henley, Henley on cue, <laughs> representing Mazda. Into stage left and exit stage, stage right. right. Great shot, head on to this brand new build, the 164 of Craig Piergross. And here we are back out in lead. Four laps remaining. This is still line astern of each other. Poole and Cruz, two very different power plants going at it. Pretty much the same sort of vehicle, a two-door coupe type of thing. Touring car type of setup there, but they are certainly doing it in a very different manner in, the, in front of them at the moment. Holden Hero and the Japanese Missile, I think, are the two uh, terminologies I'd like to call for these two. The uh, the TRP Duckwork number eight, very, very quick in a straight line. The uh, the Japanese number 13 and Paul Cruz, very, very quick through the corners, very, very good under brakes. We just can't live with a big Monaro in a straight line right now. Certainly the category does have restriction on turbo cars so that they can't just dial it up and run maximum boost because you'd probably see the uh, S13 just drive past the Monaro if that was the case. So they do have to have restrictors, but at this point in time, Paul Cruz is doing his bit behind the wheel here to drive around that, and in fact has driven an awesome weekend of motorsport. I dare say he'll pour himself out of this car, not leaving anything unknown. To get onto the back of Adam Poole after his domination of round number one, has not been no mean feat. So the car number 13, an exceptional drive this weekend, looks to the inside. Adam Poole just moves over. Nothing, not a jag at the wheel, just a slight couple of millimetres of movement on the steering wheel. Moves it around, Paul Cruz up on the ripple strip. He's looking left and right, and I tell you what, Mark Poole will know that the orange turbo behind him, if it's not the wastegate that he can hear, he'll certainly see the orange flashes in the left and right hand mirrors. Yeah, he certainly will looking every which way left, right, thinking about where he can pull this move off. We see that turn seven seems to be the favourite move. This might be the opportunity. There it is. Adam Poole drops his two right side tyres off the side of turn 10 and gifts the race lead to Paul Cruz. Let's see now if Adam Poole can put that mistake behind, flick the visor down, get back into the zone, forget what happened. Coming out of turn 10, he's still got two laps to do it in. You're going to have to suggest that Paul Cruz has been the fastest car on track. Let's see what he can do with an open track in front of him. The 131.02, fastest lap of the race so far to Paul Cruz. Keeping in mind, too, he was under the race lap record during the qualifying session yesterday, but he hasn't had the run of luck that he needs this weekend to be able to better that in race conditions. Chris Brown, Toyota AE86 out of South Australia, 
with a 129.89 is the current lap record holder all the way back in 2017. And Andrew Rhodes Anderson, there's a uh, rip bumper coming loose on that VN. Yeah, that's not what you want to see. That certainly can grab the attention of race control with uh, two laps still remaining on that car. The other VN being right behind it at the moment. He'll have a good look right at that uh, bumper as we see Troy Lloyd move up one more place on his return on Mark Farnas. There it is, just in case you were wondering. I was say whether the VM boys will help each other out, maybe help him nudge it loose. A couple of taps on that bumper to dislodge it. Problem yeah. is it comes through your own windscreen then, doesn't it? That's true, yeah. Or well, like Formula One, it'll just go under the front car and then it'll just go everywhere. Oh, Good run here, Danny Timewell locks up a rear. Has to grab brakes there as the big Falcon gets a whole handful of brakes as well. It was either evasive action or grab the brakes. There's not a lot of places when you're entering the... Uh, sweeper that you can take evasive action have a look at this how much v8 power do you want lined up for uh, fighting for position 10 in the race it was four was it eight uh, times five so what uh, there's 40 cylinders all there in three five different cars so four of them being the holden variety and they're being held up by a ford at the moment so certainly in a straight line not holding them up it's just through those twisty bits that they need to stuff it up the inside danny timewell very experienced racer as is troy well all three of them are very experienced and uh, Troy will be starting to get a bit hot under the collar after having his loop coming onto the main straight. Here he goes, streaming on through. Wow, you want a horsepower race? There it is, right there. You don't have to guess too much because it says JRE on the flanks, right behind the Shep City Bearings sign. And that's some good power down there by Troy Lloyd. So he ticks off one more on his return, trying to get inside the top 10. Yeah, good authority pass there in turn 11. Probably one of the heaviest stops on the circuit and very, very comfortable under brakes. Danny Timewell just manages to try and get on the outside here of Pierre Gross, who's just gone a little bit deep into turn one. Danny Hank tough around the outside at turn number three. This is the reprofiled section of the circuit, but he's high and wide now. Troy Lloyd's gonna stick his nose in here and see if he can have a little bit of a look at turn four, but he's not quite there. This is a great battle going on here, but our race leader is coming up to the final two corners. Paul Cruz is doing a tremendous job, setting fastest lap, last lap round on a 135.5. But have a look at this freight train of five being Held up there by the Blue Falcon of Craig Piergross. He covers it off nicely. Here's our race leader and ultimately race winner, Paul Cruz. What a weekend. Glasses down, ladies and gentlemen. That has been a tremendous race meeting. End of a race meeting. End of a Not race meeting. Not such a great lead up to it, but no. what a drive. What a textbook drive. We go back to this battle, and this is for the top 10. The one that wins this battle is going to be 10th in the race. Sorry, 9th in the race. Craig Piergross, two Commodores side by side with Danny Timewell and uh, and Troy Lloyd. Troy Lloyd again, the horsepower race, the power down is just immense. Has he got enough to get through on this big Falcon? He'll draw alongside, he'll stuff the nose in there. This is where he messed up his race exiting here. He gassed it up and looped the car around. We'll go with this one to the line. The JRE powered Shepherd City Bearings VN Commodore draws alongside, but it's not going to be enough. Ultimately, Pierre Gross gets that by 0.13 of a second. Let's not forget the front of this race. But that was a ripper for World Championship in ninth there, Steve. Almost a ripper finish right there. Going back to our lead under two, leader car Mark Baldwin. So Mark Baldwin takes honours for the round in the under two leaders. Little Honda Civic. Head of Paul Javots and Bryson Lloyd is just in the back of this shot. That is the order that they will be for under twos. And we look a bit further down, waiting for the last of the runners to come across the line. And we'll get an updated point score as to where everybody sits. But it uh, looks like Damien Milano, who has come across the line in a, what was a very lonely third place at the end of the day. Uh, actually, it was big. Andrew Butcher sort of dropped off the back uh, in the last lap or two. He looks like he's going to get set to take the round honours for round two. But... There's confirmation of your finishing position. So Paul Cruz did it easy in the end after Adam Poole's mistake a couple of laps from home with a comfortable margin. Damon Milano and Andrew Butcher spent most of the time together in positions three and four. Jared Tonks, very, very solid weekend for Jared Tonks. He's only been in the category for about 12 to 14 months and it just gets better and better and better. Great return for James Atkinson, the, uh, the Holden Commodore in P6, car number 153. David Cox gives his mother something to be cheering about from the stands and finishing ahead of uh, the Bendigo native in Cade Lehman and Craig Piergross and Troy Lloyd in that epic battle right to the death. 
certainly was a ripping battle there. Troy, James Atkinson uh, in that, uh, off the back of that one as well. There's the points as well. So, oh, and that's gone from the screen. So, uh, fantastic, Steve. Always uh, great running with improved production. We're going to take a quick break because both Steve and I will be back for Formula V in just a couple of moments. Do you have a special car, a caravan, boat or RV, but no safe space to store it at home? Let Melbourne Car Kennel securely store it for you. Conveniently located at Moorabbin Airport, with easy access to major roadways, Melbourne Car Kennel offers secure indoor and outdoor storage for anything on wheels. With 4K CCTV, monitored alarms and regular security patrols, Melbourne Car Kennel cares for your wheeled assets as if they are our own. Call Melbourne Car Kennel now and talk to Brad to organise your flexible vehicle storage solution. Discounts available for viewers who mention this advert from the Victorian State Racing Series broadcast. You can find Melbourne Car Kennel on Facebook, Instagram and online at melbournecarkennel.com. Melbourne Car Kennel, proudly supporting Blendline TV and the Victorian State Racing Series. season is on with the value-packed Serato Sport with 17-inch alloy wheels, AEB safety, parking sensors and more from just 24490 drive away. Kia, movement that inspires. Facebook isn't the only place that you can support Australian grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV. To see more real race cars, more live events and more of the racing you love, subscribe to the Blendline TV YouTube channel, sign up to our mailing list or bookmark and subscribe to our website at blendline.tv. Thanks for continuing to support grassroots motorsport with Blendline TV.